Ready? All right, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'll ask everybody to grab a seat and get situated. We'll get started here in a second. We're trying to let as many people get into the chambers in a timely manner as possible. Um, and we will get started here. All right, um, it is 10.03, we're a little bit a little bit late, but I will call the, uh, the, order, the meeting to order for, this is a special meeting for the Washoe County Board of County Commissioners for May 3rd. Um, and with that, um, Mr. Manager, will you lead us in a salute to the flag, sir? Present to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Next, uh, we have item three. We have to do roll oh, call. I'm sorry, roll call. <laughs> Thanks. I'm jumping ahead. Madam Clerk, can I get a roll call? Of course. Bob Lucy Chair? Here. Von Hartung Vice Chair? Here. Alexis Hill? Here. Kitty Jung? Present. Jeannie Herman? Here. County Manager Eric Brown? Here. Assistant District Attorney David Wattsfield? Here. And I'm Jan Galassini, your County Clerk. You have a quorum. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Mr. Manager, public comment. Public comment, comment heard under this item will be limited to three minutes per person and may pertain to matters both on and off the commission agenda. The commission will also hear public comment during individual action items with comment limited to three minutes per person. Comments are to be made to the commission as a whole. All right, Madam Clerk, will you please call public comment? First up, we have Rita Pepe followed by Valerie Fanaka. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I believe that Washoe County needs to remove the public health emergency and open up 100%. Yes. We ask that you discontinue the mask mandate, and masks are ineffective, and they are creating fear in our children. Breathing in your own CO2 is not healthy for anybody, and requiring people to wear masks has no scientific basis for the prevention or spreading or con of contracting the virus. It is an infringement on our liberties and is based on lies. In John 8:32, Jesus says, and you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. We are a free people and we are tired of the lies. Requiring masks in public is an issue of power and not truth or science. Um, I have a little article I don't know if I can get the overhead for that. Or? Our, actually, our overhead is, I think, oh, we do have the overhead. Here you go. The overhead right. is working. Sorry. We're having some technical difficulties. That's all right. This little article is from cchfreedom.org, which is, stands for the Cit Citizens Council for Health and Freedom. And it's an organization that was um, started by Twyla Brace, who is a nurse. Um, and much to the distress of vaccinated Americans, Dr. Fauci insists that masks stay on faces. Why? Let me pose a few reasons that have nothing to do with COVID. First, public health officials have long wanted to deny Americans the right to refuse vaccines. Keeping all people masked sets a president of power over the people and encourages vaccination. Second, if the vaccinated took off their masks, the unvaccinated would shed their masks too. There's no way to tell who is and who is not vaccinated. Thus, Dr. Fauci says, keep the masks on. But this is not encour encouraging vaccination at, at, uh, as the unvaccinated see no benefit to being vaccinated, besides the fact that it's an experimental drug. Third, this may ultimately be an experiment to see how far and how long public health powers can be imposed on Americans. It's time to take the masks off. Okay. As for the so-called vaccine, it does not qualify as such. It is an experimental drug and is stated by Pfizer and is not approved by the FDA. There have been many cases of adverse reactions and even deaths due to the vaccine. And I do have a couple of other um, overheads that I won't read totally, but can they be like can recorded? We, yes, we, you can, yes. Okay, yes. I have a couple, there's another one. Can I get the overhead? Yeah, overhead, it's, please? It's coming. 
I'm sorry. There you go. There you go man. Okay. There's that one. Is it recorded? Can I take it? Yes, ma'am. Yes. And so okay. you actually, what you can do is please give all those documents to the clerk and oh, she'll put okay. them on the record for you. All right. They and ma'am, before you leave the podium, can you please state your name for the record? Rita Pepe. Perfect. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Uh-huh. And if Next you're Next up, we have Valerie Fianaka, followed by Sharon Stoneman. Thank you, Ms. Fianaka. My name is Valerie Fianaka. I am represented by Von Hartung from District uh, 4. I've lived in Washoe County for a very long time. Too long to remember how long. <laughs> um, I'm going to first read something written by a neighbor of mine. Uh, I've gotten his permission. His name is Jeff Lawton. He says the goal never was and never should have been to completely eradicate the virus. All the measures taken, misguided or not, were to avoid overwhelming the health care system with a spike in seriously ill patients. We are way past that. The case numbers are essentially at a baseline level, and we shouldn't even expect them to get any lower from here. Even if we get localized increases in cases, they will never approach the initial spike because of the increasing herd immunity of the combined recoveries with immunity plus the large number of vaccinated people. Also, increased cases from the statistically low level of infection will appear as inflated percentage increases because of the low baseline numbers, but will be insignificant as a practical matter. For example, if 30 daily new cases goes to 45 daily cases, that's a 150% increase, which sounds really scary. But 15 more daily cases in a county of a half a million people has zero impact on our healthcare system. That is as over as it's going to get, and it's time to get back to a normal life and business. Speaking of businesses, I own a business in Washoe County, so I know about business and how it's been impacted. Um, this is an illness where only 1% of the infected people are hospitalized, and it has a 99% recovery rate at this point. Second, government has taken the virus and weaponized it Joe Biden, during his address to Congress, said, quote, we the people are the government. He could not be more wrong. That is a Maoist theory, philosophy. We the people give consent to be governed. The, de the Declaration of Independence states our unalienable rights include life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Whenever the government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or abolish it and institute a new government. Many people have been destroyed by our government's actions, businesses lost, suicides up, etc. The government has chosen winners, big business over small. Third, we have complied for a very long time, willingly. It is time to end the tyranny. Let those who are afraid choose to continue masking and staying home. If you're ill, that's probably what you should do. If you're immunocompromised, that's what you should do. Science does not confirm the need to continue down the path we are on, and certainly with our own children. They aren't even at risk. Thank Fourth, you. Nevada is now a sanctuary state. If we can justify that, we can Thank justify you. opening our state completely. Thank you, ma'am. Next Thank up, we have Sharon Stoneman, followed by Wes Elliott. Welcome, Ms. Stoneman. Good morning. My name is Sharon Stoneman. I have lived in Washoe County off and on since 1959. I've graduated from Reno schools, Spark schools. I went to the University of Nevada and graduated in the nursing program. For many years, I was an RN. For many years, I worked in critical care. For many years, we were told that virus are not contained by surgical masks. A virus is 0.1 micron. They go through these masks. They serve no purpose. And it was noted by uh, a journalist recently that in the 1918 Spanish flu pandemic, there were more deaths as a result of bacterial pneumonias caused from wearing masks. It actually was worse for the public than not wearing them. 
I think it's time for us to stop this tyranny. I think it's time for everybody to open up. I've had the, the virus. Many of my friends have had the virus. My family have had the virus. It has a 99.97% recovery rate. It is ludicrous to continue these for something that is so easily treated, and it can be treated. It's a known fact that hydrochloroquine, ivermectin, and budesimide work. And I, I, I have seen that amongst many friends. It's time to stop this. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Next up, we have Wes Elliott, followed by Dr. Lane Linebaugh. Welcome, Mr. Elliott. Is my time going to be affected by the situation on the side? I don't want anybody's. I don't want anybody to be distracted. I'm sorry. Is my time going to be no. altered no. by this? No, because I don't ahead. want to be anybody dis be distracted. No, no. You have our. You have at least my undivided attention. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning, Kitty, Alexis. We lost Bob, uh, Vaughn. Uh, Gen Jeannie, Eric, and David, and you folks over there. I really, number one, I want to thank you for allowing us to be here. As you know, some of us don't know how to act, and some of us do, and we're all very emotional, and we're all very interested in what's going on. <clears throat> and what I'd like to do is I'd like to pray right now. Father God, I ask you right now to come into our presence. Lord, guide us with understanding and wisdom. We know the beginning of a wisdom is the, the understanding of the word of God. And Lord, give us wisdom in how we deal with these situations, the truth and honesty. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. As I said, I want to thank you for allowing us. A lot of the other institutions have shut Patriots out for public meetings. Let's let's be real, guys. <laughs> this this face mask and this, uh, this this sickness and everything else is gone. Okay, it was. I mean, it's big deal. You know, back in uh, what was it, May, uh, March last year? Uh, no, a year ago. <laughs> it's more than a year. How we all said, oh yeah, let's all fall in, and and we all want to be healthy. We want to take care of everyone. So we fell for that. But now we know it's proven. You guys can see it, uh, depending upon uh, uh, what uh, media outlet you listen to. But if you research it, and I have done that for quite a while because I've got kids and grandkids, and it is fake. This mask, as my the previous person said, that, that they're no good. It's silly to do that. Come on, God. Let's, let's be true Americans with freedom, liberty, and I carry with me and I'm a businessman, I carry with me a book of the Constitution. I was, in, I was reminded last week at a meeting, holy crap, this is it, man. You guys work for us. We don't work for you. I mean, we appreciate your hard work and you're, you're, you're getting to the positions you have, but no, no, we the people, okay, are the employers. You are the employees. And what does a good employer do? when uh, faced with uh, employees that don't do their job, eh, you gotta let them go. You gotta let them go. And folks, I'm not threatening, I'm not uh, abusive or anything like that, but I just promise you, I'm not gonna sit down anymore. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna stand up, I'm gonna show up, and I'm gonna speak up. Next up, we have Dr. Lane Linebaugh, followed by Mr. George Lee. Welcome, Dr. Linebaugh. Good morning, commissioners. Nice to see you all. Thank you for allowing us in. I guess it's a prayerful day. I am of God. I ground myself to Mother Earth. I ask you, Father God, to break all spells, curses, manipulations, and ancient rituals for all people sitting on this board, in this room, and in our gorgeous city, state, country, and world. 
I ask that you bring in my healing team, God team, and guide team, Elohim, Archangels, Holy Spirit, the one known as Christ, the animal kingdom, plant kingdom, and crystal kingdom, as well as the God team, guide team, and healing team for all those present and restore us to sanity. I ask that you remove all lies, all first through third dimensional veils and lower frequencies and vibrations of electronics and planned mind control that is not for our highest good. Please remove all masks, muzzles, secrets, schemes, hidden agendas, and deceptions, and anything mandatory or mandated, and restore us to our freedoms, divinely guided by you. I bring all the beings involved with all these manipulations, infinite levels high, infinite levels wide, no matter how remote, before you, God, for justice in only the way you know how. I release them all to you, God, with unconditional love and forgiveness. I ask that you restore the hearts, minds, souls, ears, and eyes of all humankind to your right side up world and your divine sacred love. I ask you, God, Mother Earth, and send you, I thank you, God, Mother Earth, and send you my unconditional love in the name of Christ. So be it. Amen. Thank you, Doctor. Next up, we have Mr. George Lee, followed by Ms. Bev Stenenham. Welcome, Mr. Lee. Yeah, George Lee, for the record. I want to thank you, Jeannie, for your stand and for um, holding the line. And uh, it's even though you're not getting much support <laughs> on uh, these things. Um, you know, this county and this state have a 7% unemployment. That's the highest in the nation. It's not, am I wrong? I don't, you shook your head, I just saw. Um, and we have the quote, I don't know if it's improved any, but I think it's still the worst schools in the, you know, in the nation, our state and our county. Uh, no matter what kind of, you know, liars can figure and, but figures don't lie. Is that what the <laughs> statement is? Um, this business of we, we had a promise that this was going to be finished when we flattened the curve just to protect the hospitals from being overrun. Well, the hospitals weren't overrun and they aren't overrun. And if anything, uh, we're down to 30 beds out of, <clears throat> out of 500,000 souls. Um, the, the numbers that are, have been and are continue to be used are fictitious numbers that were uh, the function of a bribe from the federal government for hospitals to get more money. Um, and you, by turning this over to an unelected official in the health department is a travesty. It's an absolute travesty. Um, the buck stops here, guys. It's your responsibility to do the right thing. Now, I'm not saying you should go, everybody just cough in everybody's face because people, even in the European countries where they didn't put on masks and they didn't go through the rigmarole and didn't close schools and didn't do that, people practiced good health um, practices. They, if they were sick, they stayed home. If they were, you know, had a problem, they got it taken care of in the health system, but they didn't hide behind masks. Now, the only person who is a great beneficiary of this are the criminals who have masks on now to be, keep from being identified. So stop harming the people. Thank you, Mr. Lee. Next up we have Ms. Bev Stenenham followed by Ms. Carol Feinberg. Welcome. Good morning. My name is Bev Stenjum. I'm a Reno resident. I see several of you this morning on your cell phones, and I would appreciate it if you would give us your attention. Um, 
I am here today to ask you to do the right thing and open up Washoe County completely. No social distancing, no capacity maximum, no masks. Did you know that there are 22 states across our country that are completely open right now? Did you know that there are eight counties in Nevada that are completely open right now? A friend of ours is a hospital worker at Renown and says that the beds are pretty much empty and that they are sending home nurses and doctors because there's a lack of work. The health emergency is over and has been over for a long time. It is past the time to let our mom and pop businesses get back to earning a living before they go broke and before they go out of business for good. I'm sure many of you have noticed the restaurants that have gone out of business great restaurants here in Reno. And it's way past time to take these muzzles off of our faces. Most studies show that they're not effective in stopping the tiny particles that can easily get through these masks. And there isn't any standard for these masks. You can wear pretty much anything you want over your face, even a lightly woven piece of mesh fabric with lots of holes passes as a mask. So masks have become a complete joke. On another topic, I want to know why it is impossible to get anything on your agenda. I looked on your website and couldn't find a form. So I called my representative, Jean Harmon, the other day and asked her how I could get something on the agenda. She chuckled and said, good luck with that. I can't even get an agenda item. Why is that? So I sent an email to Eric Brown. I haven't heard back from Eric yet. I just sent it the other day, but I was hoping to get an answer before this morning. So, you know, we have elected you to represent us. We would like to get agenda items on the agenda so we can speak to them. Do you need to be reminded of your oath of office to support, protect, and defend the Constitution and our liberties, our freedoms? You have to live under the same freedoms do you want your kids to grow up without, your, without liberties and without freedoms? They're chipping away at us, little by little. Your website states that you will provide quality public service. The county exists to serve the public. I hope you will honor your oath. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Next up, we have Ms. Carol Feinberg, followed by Ms. Janet Butcher. Good morning, commissioners. It's me again. First of all, I want to give you a little lesson in American history. In 1954, President Eisenhower was asked to please put a comma between one nation and under God. And he says, absolutely not. Not even a comma will separate our nation from God. You are messing with God's law right now, right here and now. I know you say it has to go to the commission or the, the other committee that is comprised of a representative from Sparks and a representative from Reno and a representative from the Health Department. But you are our elected officials. We don't have any place else to go. That's why we're here every week. We have no place else to plea for sanity and common sense. You've heard all these great speakers before me, and I just echo all that. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ms. Feinberg. Next Thanks. up, Ms. Janet Butcher, followed by Mr. James Bentham. Well, um, welcome, Ms. Butcher. Good morning. Uh, my name's Janet Butcher. More anxiety, depression, suicide attempts. Officials might have a real, have had a real reason to worry about the pandemic, but using government force to restrict businesses, even those whose customers are willing to do business despite the potential health risk is clearly immoral. As government officials use the sanctity of life as an excuse to keep people from living their lives, we lose people to hopelessness, and perhaps that alone proves that lockdowns are simply not worth it. Animal cruelty was up over the last year. This was reported, um, uh, and. I was unable to find any recent analysis on statistics. However, according to the reports in the Reno Gazette Journal last year in April, 
the Domestic Violence Resource Center in Washoe saw a 64% increase in calls to its 24-hour hotline. We can only imagine that this could still be an issue. Each day during the pandemic lockdowns in Nevada, NAMI, the National Association for Mental Illness, documented a 600% increase and they logged 2,392 hours of phone line time. About 50% of the calls mentioned COVID-19 as a stressor, along with depression, anxiety, and so social isolation, this can lead to suicide. Having had a teenage nephew commit suicide, I can attest to the lasting devastation this can have on a family. I am sure you are all aware of this, but thought it was worth mentioning. Tyranny under the guise of safety is still tyranny. Thank you. Next up, Mr. James Benson, followed by Ms. Carrot Hyen Minor. Welcome, Mr. Benson. Uh, James M. Bentham, for the record, I'm going to take off my mask, but I do have difficulty breathing when I'm wearing it. Um, Dylan's rule talks about state power versus county power. Um, Dylan's rule states that uh, where the governor has the power, a, a government entity is connected to a state as a child is connected to a parent. In, in Nevada, we already have uh, eight counties that are open so that it doesn't appear that this rule has to apply. Uh, I'd like you to consider that when you think about the, the, the governor and his rules and, and mandates that are arbitrary. Next, I want to talk about consumers. Consumers want choices. They get the best choices under a capitalistic system versus a socialist system. Yeah. Right, right now, uh, consumers want choices. I oppose the opening uh, based on vaccinations. Vaccinations should only be given out with informed consent. When you purchase a product uh, like, like this, you get uh, um, ingredients, warranty conditions, and possible side effects. Many people are asking questions. Uh, do the consumers know, uh, um, know these three things in order to have a informed consent before taking one of these shots. These shots are, are new, experimental uh, drugs. Smart consumers are not going to take an untested experimental shot. This is not a vaccine. Consumers want choices. Are masks effective? Fauci has recently said, well, you should wear two masks. The more masks you wear, act like an oil filter. They will collect the particles and you will be breathing them in and out on a constant basis. People have different opinions about uh, masks. They should be given uh, choices. Some of the conditions to consider is, have they uh, taken the vaccine? Do they have the antibodies? Do they have a strong immune system like children? Uh, I ask you to consider these things as you make your decisions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bentham. Next up, Ms. Karen Hyatt Minor, followed by Gary Minor. Good morning. Welcome, Ms. Hyatt Minor. Good morning. How are you? Good. How are you? Um, so, this is a really 
hot button topic for me because I am a small local business owner. And as a small local, local business owner, I was forced to shut down and do lots of terrible things for my business while Home Depot, Walmart, Costco, I own a wine store. And um, you can go to Walmart with 5,000 people in there and go and buy wine, but you can't come into my place because you're going to get COVID and die. It's just been this crazy, ridiculous thing. And if I could get the overhead, I'd like to show something that's a photo on my phone. And what this is, is that's Governor Sisolak standing in Walgreens. And right here, he's right behind the sign which says to social distance and what? Wear a mask. What does he not have on his face? There's no mask. Who's that by him, that dirty looking thing in the corner that he literally is maybe five inches from that person? Also not wearing a mask. But yet we're supposed to wear masks. We have to comply. We have to be good little citizens and do all this stuff because we're told to do it. But the thing is, we were told a long time ago, March 16th, two weeks just to keep the hospitals from being overcrowded. We are 15 months in, people. It's time to reopen. It's time to reopen. It's time to reopen. Get rid of the mass, 100% capacity. Stop this nonsense. And I'm telling you what, we appreciate you guys being here, but I will tell you it's very, very disrespectful to see people on their phones and looking at their computers and not paying attention to what the voters have to say. And we're tired of it. Everybody wants to be reopened. And the thing is, there's so much depression out there because why? People need people. You don't need to be hiding in your house. People need people. You have to be with other people. You have to, and we stood up here and we did the um, Pledge of Allegiance. And it says, with liberty, liberty and justice. Do you think there's liberty when we're forced to close our businesses? Do you think there's liberty when we're forced to, forced to not be open 100%? Is there liberty when we're forced to wear a mask? Hey, if anybody wants to wear a mask, that's their thing. They can totally do that. I have no issue with that. If you choose to wear a mask because that's what, how, what makes you feel safe or makes you feel good, I personally have a lung issue. I can't wear one. But I, don't, I also don't want people like going, oh my God, she's not wearing one and she's going to kill us. It's just not fair. So please, I'm begging you, we need to get reopened. 100%, no masks, no restrictions. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Gary Miner, followed by Ms. Christina Schwenke. Welcome, Mr. Miner. Good morning, members of the council. Just want to thank you for listening to us. I want to tell you that I agree with almost 99% of what the people who spoke before me have said. Um, I'm a Vietnam veteran, former retired police officer, and um, I don't like my liberties to be taken away by the governor of this state or this council. So it's time for the, this council to reopen uh, Washoe County, take away the mass mandate, so we could all live as we're supposed to live, with freedom. Um, I, I don't, as a business owner, I don't think that, you've turned us into the mass police. So when peace, people walk into our business, we go, oh, can't come in here, gotta have a mask. You know, as soon as they sit down at a table and have a glass of wine, they can take their masks off. And they're all sitting around at a table, we've had to restrict the number of people, remove some of our tables, so it's cost us money as far as business goes. But now it's, I'm, I'm gonna make mine short. I just wanna say I agree with everybody that said something already said, talked, but come on, give us a break. Remove the mess. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Miner. Ms. Christina Schwenke followed by Ms. Lori Agnew. Good morning, Ms. Schwenke. Good morning. Can I get the projector, please? Yes, can we get the overhead, please? Hi, my name is Christina Schwanke, and I'd like you all to remember that name. Eric, I'm talking to you too. I'd like you guys to think about the voters that you guys are looking for, the people that you're wanting to attract, 
and I'm that. I'm a millennial, I'm a woman, and I'm a parent, and I'm raising the next generation. I'm also somebody who identified as an independent until four years ago. I think these masks have been wonderful, not because they do anything, we've heard the science behind that, but because they have brought people together. If you guys aren't aware of what's happening on the outside, I'd like to just let you know something. I am a very right-wing Trump supporter, and I am uniting with Bernie supporters. How exciting is that? We never saw that coming, but these brought it along. <laughs> you guys are gonna start losing voters. You're gonna start losing your base, and people are starting to come, to come together because of a grassroots movement. And you know what's causing that? It was a little girl that you saw on that screen. When I sent her to school, and she came home every day with a bloody nose, and she cried every day from kindergarten that she had to wear a mask, and she wasn't learning anything, I thought, oh, I should probably get pretty active with this. So guess what? I'm giving up my high-paid tech job that I'm very, very good at and have taken a company far away with, and I'm joining the grassroots movement to make sure that anybody sitting here, anybody sitting in any county in Nevada or the US loses their seat if they do not help free the people from this public health crisis we've been talking about and listen to the science, stop the censorship, and take care of our kids. So I want you guys to know, if you live in a, a district with Democrats, the Bernie supporters love me. And if you live in a district with Republicans, don't worry, we are getting rid of your rhinos. So please understand very, very, very clearly that not only is the, is the grass movement growing, but there are some really talented individuals giving up everything to take you on. Thank you, ma'am. Next up, we have Ms. Lori Agnew, followed by Ms. Cindy Sassenrath. Good morning, Ms. Agnew. Good morning. And I was just really kind of curious. It seems now we have your attention. But the last time I was here, and then up until a few moments ago when people started addressing your demeanor and your behavior up there, we weren't getting everybody's full attention. We're still not quite getting Eric Brown's attention. From time to time, he looks up. But half the time, I think he's asleep. <laughs> and I've noticed several yeah. people looking down. I don't know if you're writing notes. I don't know exactly what you're doing. But we come here with the most respect for you, and we would like to be treated equally. I'm confused at what this commission's mission is in regards to opening up the county. If I understand it correctly, you must come up with a plan. Otherwise, our county will follow the governor's plan. And that plan is violating our constitutional rights. I am trying to make sense of how the governor, now this commission, intends to accomplish this task and when. I do not need to stand here and lecture you on statistics on COVID or hospital occupancy, the lack of science regarding masks, et cetera. You already have that information. My point is, is there no, is no reason for this illegal mandate to remain in effect. We demand, we are not asking, we demand to open Washoe County 100% without masks. Yes. Let's, those who want to wear masks, let them keep that option. Let those who are ill stay at home and away from the healthy. Let the healthy resume a normal life as we are entitled to do under the Constitution. Let me remind you that this is a country founded on the principle of self-government, a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. As George Washington so eloquently stated, quote, the power under the Constitution will always be with the people, end quote. People elected to government positions are our representatives. Webster defines representative as one that represents another and standing or acting for another, especially through delegated authority. Our votes gave you the position you now occupy. You have a duty and a responsibility to us, the people. If you continue to fail us, make no mistake, we will work tirelessly to unseat you when you are up for re-election. We are a peaceful group, but growing in numbers, as our last speaker mentioned. We are determined. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. 
Next up, Ms. Cindy Sasharath, followed by Ms. Kelsey Schroeder. Welcome, Ms. Sasharath. Thank you. Good morning. And I have to reiterate that it has been disconcerting to see how many of you don't seem to be paying attention. Some of you have your eyes down all the time, and you can't see me because you get your eyes down. There you go. David? No. no. Anyway, did you know that last October the CDC estimated the survival rate? This is last October of COVID to be 99.74. That means COVID had a 0.26% a chance of killing me when I had it at Christmas. Obviously, I beat those odds. I'm not saying that there haven't been tragic deaths from people who have seemed young and healthy to survive, but I think that's true of the flu and many other diseases. Since when did we not go anywhere for fear of getting sick? Actually, I think we consider it a mental illness. It's called nosophobia. I looked that up this morning. That's the fear of getting ill. There have been some good things that have come out of this pandemic. We can now get groceries or just about anything we need delivered right to our door, the door of our car. We don't even need to go in the store if we're afraid. No one thinks you're a bit odd if you're wearing a mask, even though trying to keep COVID-19 virus with a mask away is like using a chain link fence to stop mosquitoes. 15 days ago, 15 days to stop the spread is long gone. Anyone who is concerned can get a vaccine. I am not concerned as I have natural immunity, so don't try and force me to get an experimental drug. I will wait for the largest human trial ever conducted to be over, and then I'll look at the cost-benefit analysis with my doctor, and then make a decision whether I should get the shot or not. In conclusion, I'm asking you to be heroes. I'm asking you to stand up and open up our county. You, can t you, you have the power to override Governor Sisolak. Do it. Use your power. That's all we're asking you to do. People need to take personal responsibility. If you're concerned about your health, stay home. If I knew there was an outbreak of something that might affect me, I'd stay home. But I'm not asking anybody else who isn't concerned to do the same. No one should stop you from staying home or choosing to wear a mask if you want to, and I don't think that's going to happen now because people are so ingrained with it. But please don't stop me from living the, way, the life the way I choose. Please don't hurt any of our businesses that have worked so hard to make it, because it's not easy to make a small business owner. Please give us the opportunity to go back to normal, open up the county 100%, and tell the other government officials where they can go. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sassamer. Next up, Ms. Kelsey Schroeder, followed by Ms. Susie Howell. Welcome, Ms. Schroeder. Good morning, thank you. I'm Kelsey Schroeder for the record. Um, pretty much just here again requesting that we end the um, local health emergency. Um, I mean, I just wanna say that Mr. Lucy stated himself that there really was no reason for us to be under a local health emergency, but then went and voted to keep us in a local health emergency, so I'm just confused as to really what's going on here, why we are still in a local health emergency. I 100% agree with many of the speakers that, you know, let's take personal responsibility. Um, you know, like the lady just said, there's gonna be tons of people still wearing the mask, good for them. There's gonna be people not, which we already aren't. So why do we have to be looked at, judged, when we are not sick? I also had COVID, I have natural immunity, and I think that we need to look much deeper into the numbers of natural immunity within our county because I think it is much higher than anyone is um, bringing up. It has to be extremely high. Um, really, if you aren't gonna listen to us, please free the children. The children are suffering. They are at school wearing masks. It's disgusting. I'm watching them drop them on the ground, step on them, put them back on their face. Who knows what's happening in the restrooms? I was at a restaurant, saw someone drop their mask and go, oh, oops, it was 
face side down, and then when they left, they put it back on their face. It's just disgusting what is happening with this. Um, the blue mass, you are inhaling um, you know, plastic particles, and I cannot go one place in our county without seeing at least five blue mass. Uh, it is littering our county. It is disgusting, the litter, and then those are biohazard in a hospital. They should be put into a biohazard, and I am walking around with them everywhere, and I feel horrible that I don't feel comfortable picking them up because I usually am a trash picker upper and try to help the community. So, um, and the local health emergency, um, in the minimum, please save the children. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Schroeder. Next up, we have Ms. Susie Howell, followed by Mr. Gary Castrum. Welcome, Ms. Howell. Good morning, again. Um, I'm, I'm listening to some of the other speakers saying, thank you for having us. I don't agree with that. You make it very apparent that you really don't care what we have to say on at every turn. Um, <clears throat> and I can't believe that every one of you up there believes that this virus can't attack you once you've sitting down at a restaurant. <laughs> I can't believe that every one of you believes that if you're six feet apart, not five, not two, that you could get the Rona, which really isn't around anymore. And I, frankly, I'm embarrassed over it. I am embarrassed over anybody that thinks that way anymore. <clears throat> I also have a little thing that I'd like to read, and it says, what does it mean to be healthy? Apparently, it is to live in perpetual fear and keep people in fear, restrict natural breathing, limit human contact, limit your time in nature, sanitize everything with toxic chemicals and substances. How strange, really, because the healthiest people I know do the exact opposite. Um, we have to open up this county and stop this farce. It is becoming, frankly, embarrassing. I, I'm embarrassed for all of you I don't understand how any of you can sleep at night. You're touting a vaccine, which by the way, it is not a vaccine. It is a deadly jab in the arm. Some of you are touting it. Do you understand how th this thing is so nefarious? I have a friend that had it six weeks ago. Six weeks ago, guess what she got? Dementia. And from six weeks to this moment now, have you ever heard of a dementia move that fast? She went from being an average citizen, she's in skilled nursing. Name me something else that can cause that. And you're touting it and applauding the woman who comes up here to, to say, what a good job we're all doing, especially when she touts, we're hitting the, the Hispanics and the black communities. Wow, that blows my mind. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Howard. Next up, we have Mr. Gary Hastrom, followed by Ms. Susan Bush. How are you doing today? How are you, sir? I'm Gary Hagstrom. I'm a Vietnam veteran. My father fought in World War II, got wounded in Guadalcanal. My uncle Al was a prisoner of war to communist Japan. Came back with one lung and died very young, handsome young man. We've done our share for this country. What you people are doing, everyone is making me sick. Sick to my stomach. You see that flag? That represents the American people. We the people. And we are tired of it. We are tired of these masks. And I'm tired of you, okay? I was an executive for United Technologies, okay? I started as a machine operator, worked my way to a private office, flew around the world with first class to all the CEOs in the world, okay? To make sure our jet engines worked. I had an engineer come to me once, four-year college. I worked full-time nights and went to school full-time days, okay? Try that sometime. 
And uh, like I said, I started at the bottom, worked my way up. And I worked my way up fast because I knew what I was doing. And the company paid a guy uh, $100,000 a year to cheese me for five years. Metallurgical chemical and engineer. These things are going to kill you. There's chemicals in here you don't want to breathe. You wouldn't breathe them if they were in a can. The microfibers in here that you're breathing in every day is going to kill you. It's going to give you lung disease and a lot of other things later on in life. And I see the kids. I live near a school wearing these masks, these little kids. What are you, crazy? I wasn't bored with the mask, and I'm not wearing a mask. <laughs> have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next up, we have Ms. Susan Bush, followed by Ms. Linda Frieden. Ms. Susan Bush. This is my first time speaking, so I just want to say please lift this non-existent public emergency and throw away these masks and let us live a normal life in Nevada. I, I retired here from California, which I left, and Nevada is beginning to feel just like California. It stinks. So please get this state back open. Thank you, Ms. Bush. Ms. Linda Frieden, followed by Ms. Carol Kitch Kitchick. Welcome, Ms. Frieden. Hi. My name is Linda Frieden, and I am a resident of Washoe County, and I believe, Bob Lucy, you represent me. Um, I attended this commissioner's meeting a few weeks ago and listened to the public comments regarding current COVID restrictions. Um, before that and since then, I've talked with my neighbors and other gatherings of my own communities, and the sentiments and concerns all seem to align. We, and I'm sure you as well, have had enough with the struggle of masks distancing, and restricted occupancy numbers. I too, along with many, many others, believe that it's just time to restore our proper constitutional free process of living our daily lives without any restrictions and fully responsible for ourselves. We want our freedom back. There's story upon story of the burdens of the governor's restrictions and mandates, and yet the one aspect of real science that seems to be accepted by everyone across the board, across the world, from the beginning to now has never changed even slightly to the negative, and that's the 99% recovery rate, 99.7, 99.9. And I won't even go into our own falling numbers in uh, trends in case numbers and death numbers and the inefficient PCR tests in Nevada. The social and emotional destruction of our daily lives is measurable, yes, measurable. All you have to do is open your eyes and look around. People walk away from others when passing in the street. They don't even look at each other anymore. Neighbors answer their doors with a mask on and stand away as far as possible. In public, people even try to shame you for what they deem an infraction of, as they mistakenly see it, a law. There's real division among our fellow citizens. It's growing more and more bitter. And it's destroying the social fabric of our community. It's panic gone crazy. You know, you already understand this. I know you do. I'm not telling you anything new. Why am I so concerned with the social commotional aspect of the restrictions? Because in March of last year, I was a member of a recovery group that was meeting five days a week. The personal en engagement and close relationships I developed were critical to me in my own recovery and good health, and then in a heartbeat, it was stripped away. My only solace was that it was temporary, but that, slowly, that hope slowly died, and the meetings died, and pretty soon, uh, the in-person meetings, we were clamoring for in-person meetings. Uh, of those, many backed up their own addictive crushing habits. They, they picked them back up again. Two-dimensional contacts may be better than nothing, but it's not the same. On a very personal note, I want to tell you my own sister-in-law died from this disease. She was in her early 70s. She was healthy on the outside, but panicked by the COVID, COVID news and government restrictions on the inside. She was isolated and de depressed, but we didn't know. She put up a good front, but then in December, she took her life. She died of covid panic and unconstitutional restrictions and mandates and poor mental health, and she didn't even have the virus. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you, Ms. Frieden. Next up, we have Ms. Carol Kitchuk, followed by Ms. Donnie Olson.
Welcome, Ms. Gidry. Good morning. This is my very first time to speak to you folks. I will tell you that I am a proud American citizen. I have ancestors who fought in the Revolutionary War, the Civil War on the North, Vietnam War, World War II, uncles, grandparents, fathers, and my son in Iraq. So I am very proud to be here. I will tell you that the mask wearing is something that we have all done in trying to be good citizens of the county and the state. But after you're informed, you understand that this is no longer viable. It makes no common sense to wear a mask that doesn't prevent the COVID. Now, a year ago, March, I had the COVID. I have given blood and found that I have the antibodies. And then, because I want to be a traveler in the world, I have been vaccinated. I'm not sure that was the right thing to do because I had the antibodies, but that doesn't fit on a little three by five card that you can show to the United Kingdom or Greece. So I got the vaccine. This nonsense needs to end. We need to take the masks off and we need to open up our businesses and we need to protect the children. The whole idea that you have children wearing masks when they are more immune than all the rest of us and the rest of us is what is one tenth of one percent chance of fatality. This makes no sense to me. You all sit here and wear a mask except for Jeannie. Thank you, dear, for not succumbing. Yeah. You know, we appreciate that. You represent us. I mean, the rest of you, I, I, I don't understand. You're almost six feet apart. Haven't you all been vaccinated? If you've been vaccinated, what's the point? of wearing this mask that inhibits your breathing and obviously could make you very sick. So I've said my piece and I thank you for listening and we'll see you next time. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Ms. Don Olson followed by Ms. Jamie Sh Shepler. Welcome, Ms. Olson. Hi. I'm not a public speaker, but I've had enough. I'm shaking, I'm nervous, I'm sweating profusely, so just know that. If I start crying, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm very passionate about this issue, which you all should be. Jeannie, I love you. Love you. Um, uh, I had COVID, so did my entire family in November. We all had it, we all survived. My husband is 64, he survived. He thought he had allergies that day. Vaughn, I was here once. I, I, I like you too. I believe I, I did vote for you and my whole family. Um, but one time I was here and you said something that just struck with me. It just struck a chord. You said you went out to dinner, everybody had masks on, and everybody was six feet apart, and it was a wonderful time. That's not wonderful. It's not wonderful. It's not. And I, I, I'm quoting you verbatim. Anyway. I'm not as eloquent as some here, but I will tell you, these masks have to go. They are ridiculous. We all look ridiculous. They're right about the blue mask and the chemicals. That's why I have something on my face that looks like lace panties. <laughs> it's not. Hopefully I made you all smile. But wait, I can't see your mouths. I see you smiling. Um, Come on, people. This is not a this should not be a political issue. I don't care what your party is. I don't care. It's common sense, folks. Common sense. I don't see how all of us can be wrong, really. I being that I had the antibodies, I also donated my plasma to help others. This is what Americans do. Here I am doing something that I hate, but I'm thinking of others. Why aren't you all thinking of us? Why? I don't get it. I don't get it. Um, I have a daughter that would like to get pregnant. Can you women, hopefully you have children, imagine what that must do to the fetus to not get proper oxygen? 
Imagine, what are we doing to this future generation that's not even born yet? Um, I, we've all complied, we've all been patient, but enough is enough. We've had enough of this charade. It is, I, I don't, well, anyway. The curve was flattened. I agree with everything everyone has said. It is not constitutional. Come on, it is not. And I know you guys must not like it. I get it. Who loves this? Who? Not nobody, okay? But look at the science. If you really want to look at the science, look at the science. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Next up, we have Ms. Jamie Shepler, followed by Mr. Donald Fossum. Hello there. Hello, My Shepard. name's Jamie Shepler. Um, I just want to say this is not Ebola. We're not talking about the Ebola virus here. We're talking about COVID, a virus that has 99% survivability. For those who are scared or compromised, they can choose to stay home or to wear a mask. For those who've been vaccinated, those who've had COVID like myself, I can't believe I lived to tell the story, or for those who just don't care, we should be able to live our normal lives and breathe fresh air. Have you seen the recent MIT study that discovered it doesn't matter if you're wearing a mask and you're six feet or 60 feet away from people? They don't work. Not to mention the psychological and emotional toll they're having on people, especially our children. For myself, wearing a mask took my recurrent sinus infections and made them chronic to the point that five weeks ago, I just had to have sinus surgery. We cannot let the cure be worse than the problem, and in this case, that's what you're doing. We elected you guys to speak for us, and you're falling down on the job. The mask sort of flattened the curve, and the curve has been flattened for a while now. I'm not asking you to outlaw masks. I'm just asking you to let me decide what's best for my own health. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Shepler. Next up, we have Mr. Donald Fossum, followed by Ms. Sarah Haddon. Welcome, Mr. Fossum. Why, thank you. I'm unqualified to be here. I'm 75 years old and not part of the survival rate that somebody invented. I've been to every big rally. I've been to our wonderful anti-masker meetings for 14 months. I waved my mask the other day. It's 14 months old. I had a lung problem a little while ago. I didn't get to take all these other ordinary ingredients. You know what I did? I sucked on phosphorus, so my spit glowed, but it cured my lungs. But I want to point something out here. We're all right ringers here, for the most part. Pardon me if you all aren't. I want to direct you to the right. Washoe County, strategic direction. Washoe County will, blah, blah, blah. So it, Social economic policy leadership force. What I'm saying to you today is you are the leaders, and through bad policy, you are forcing the curtailment of social and economics. And you're violating our rights. You know, times are changing, they have changed. You're watching the change right here because you have been elected by uninformed people. You're, for, you're facing a whole different baby now. We're all going to class. We're all in class now. Sheriff Mack just flew through here the other day, and you're hearing him and everybody here today. So I'm saying that we're not here by request to have a voice. We're here because we are the damn voice. Thank you. Well, see how fast I can read this. I do have a script today. And I'm the guy that usually wears the house arrest shirt. I just dressed funny today out of celebration for that. We're supposed to be open and we're going to hit it hard with you guys because we got new ammo. All right, stop playing along with the governor and, and begin playing along with the Constitution, the people, and their Bill of Rights. You all took an oath to protect our rights so you would not infringe on them. Though for enforcement of illegal mandates, you use those who have not taken that pledge to enforce them. Case in point is your independent 
police force. Having them do your dirty work is comparable to the convenience of your mask, so you do not have to speak to us. All we get is your gavel when we become passionate. Per my request for, for feedback last week, Commissioner Herman boldly spoke up in an appeal to the commission to take our appeals into serious consideration, to which the chairperson, Lucy, re reprimanded her in a way for her suggestion being out of order with the character of the session. Thank you, sir. Followed by- Thank you, sir. Next up, we have Ms. Sarah Haddon, followed by Mr. Andrew Diss. Thank you, sir. Ms. Sarah Haddon. Welcome, Ms. Haddon. Good morning. Good morning. Our community is becoming increasingly <clears throat> unsafe and unhealthy. People with no authority enforce these masks. People with authority don't. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Next up, we have Mr. Andrew Diss, followed by Ms. Julianne Harrison. Welcome, Mr. Diss. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioners, for the record, Andrew Diss, Vice President with Morello Gaming, which owns and operates the Grand Sierra here in town. I, I want to thank you all for bringing this latest proposal in front of you for consideration today. I know you had a crack at the apple a couple weeks ago, but not because of your fault, but because of some other jurisdictions we weren't able to get there. So, um, look, we, we all know we're not going to get back to 100% overnight, but if this proposal in front of you today gets us moving along that road, uh, we're all here to support it. You know, we have a sister property that we own in Las Vegas, uh, the Sahara, and as of Saturday, uh, we got to begin operating under much looser restrictions because they're located in Clark County than we do in Washoe County. And all of you know, you've heard it today, we've all made tremendous sacrifices, those of us who live here in Washoe over the past year. We've done a better job of stopping the spread and uh, getting the vaccination rate up higher, especially compared to Clark County. So uh, we, we hope that you guys approve what's in front of you today. Um, you know, our team members at GSR, uh, sometimes when you come into a casino property, you feel like there's no rules, especially if you're coming from another state. We have had team members that have been spit on, they have been cussed at, they have been physically assaulted because you know, we have to ask them to follow the rules. Now, we understand that following those rules is gonna get all of our people back to work a little more quickly. And if those are the sacrifices that we have to make to bring our team members back, we're willing to do it because we've had team members that have been out of work, completely out of work for over a year. People in our conventions and banquets, people in our uh, entertainment department, and that's because of all the restrictions that we have operated under. So, you know, if following some of these rules means that we get there, uh, we, we will do it and, and we'll do what's asked of us. Um, but it, with that, I just wanna urge you to approve what's in front of you today, uh, because once you do so, we can get along that road back to 100%. So thank you, commissioners. Thank you, Mr. Diss. Next up, Ms. Julianne Harrison, followed by Ms. Kaylin Sutton. Welcome, Ms. Harrison. Thank you. Well, are you kidding me? Here we go again, trying to get you to do your job. You have failed to fulfill your duty and responsibility as elected representatives on the Board of Washoe County Commissioners. 
at the expense and freedoms uh, and at the expense of the freedoms and liberties of thousands of men, women, and children, you have allowed unelected bureaucrats to bully you into non-action. Instead of turning tail and running from, no res from a no response by those aforementioned bureaucrats, your immediate reaction should have been to work for a change and come to a solution that would have best served the people of Washoe County. Shame on you. Why we are still having these meetings is beyond me anyway. The numbers, the science, do not support mask wearing, social distancing, or capacity limits, and you know it. This is no longer a public health emergency either, and you know that too. This past week, you have exhibited nothing less than thoughtless, selfish apathy, and perhaps a case of superiority complex. If it were not so, if freedoms and liberties meant anything to this board, we would not be here today. Parents of our community received a letter from their child's coach a few days ago explaining that due to the fact that our elected representatives, and I'll paraphrase, did nothing to come up with a plan for opening Washoe County, the fields would have to continue to allow only a certain number of spectators, and those spectators must be from the same immediate households of the team member. In most cases, this eliminates grandparents, aunts, uncles, and cousins. It's disgusting, and it's outside. In other words, this coach was expecting something, oh, I don't know, something positive that might involve relinquishing, or at the very least, loosening these unnecessary rules that once again, I will say, are not supported by science or the numbers. But instead, you know what he got? A big zero which is somewhat how I am doing this board right now, with a couple exceptions. Fight for us, the people. Quit worrying about the person on the right or left of you or the, your leader down in Vegas and stand up for what is right for us, the people. Don't you see your ineptness affects life in more ways than you care to realize and actually do something about? It's time for all the fluff on the COVID task force, the Reno Spark City Councils, and the wannabes and the Washoe County Board of Commissioners to get rid of those insidious mandates of mass social distancing and capacity limits and the propaganda of vaccine coercion. Let's get the masks off the kids too. It's a form of child abuse. Yeah. Just do your jobs and do it according to the real numbers and the real science. Thank you, Ms. Harrison. Yes. Ms. Kaylin Sutton, followed by Ms. Melanie Sutton. Why is there a pen up here? Hmm? I don't know. Welcome, Ms. Sutton. Good morning. Um, like I said last time, the flag stands for freedom, but does it anymore? And did you have to wear a mask when you were a kid? If you have kids, it's not really good for them to wear a mask because your germs from your hands goes to the masks mask and then you put your mask on the your face so you tell me is that good focus <laughs> um That's all I need to say. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sutton. Ms. Melanie Sutton, <laughs> followed by Ms. Stephanie Dillingham. Um, so I believe it's rules for thee and not for me, right? And I'm talking to Kitty Jung, right? So if you, mm -hmm. I'm gonna play something real quick and put it on, if you can put that on the projector. Can we get the overhead, please? Oh, well, you can't see it. But anyways, Miss Jung, I have a video of you. Okay, here we go. 
So I have video of you prior to the meeting starting, prior to the, the cameras coming on. That's you without a freaking mask. But you want us to wear a mask where we're going? Like you want us to wear a mask? You want to force us to freaking take the shot? That has, that has not been approved by the FDA. Address. I'm not cussing. I know, address the board as a whole, please. What's that? Please address the board as a whole. I will address you next, Thank you. okay? Thank you. So, um, Fine. you want to force us to take the shot that is not approved by the FDA, and this is all for you, all of you. You want us to take the shot that's not approved by the FDA? Okay, so just also, um, Jung, you are going to have to be reelected in 2022, right? Guess what? You're in a district where I know thousands of people. Look me up, Nevada Grassroots. We will fight and you will not be reelected for what you're doing to us, okay? So not only that, but I'd also like to, to present, I did, I, so I did, I did, so two, 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 two times ago, I did say that I was a nobody and I got a lot of flack from that. Well, what I'm saying is I was, I was just an average American that was fighting against this tyranny, okay? But I, as an average American, is on Antifa's list. They are putting my address with my children on their websites. To, and my children are at home right now, two of them. But my address, my name, this is just from, this. I get this on a weekly basis. This is just, what, two days ago? Yesterday? No, I think it was yesterday, actually. My husband and my name on the Antifa because of what we're doing right now because we're fighting for freedom because I'm an American. Yes, I did say I was a nobody. Chill. But I'm American that is fighting for everybody's freedom. I don't wear a mask. This isn't for me. This is for everybody else that's freaking still wearing the dang thing. They need to stop because you are, you. who the heck do you guys think you are? You work for us just like last week, Lucy, you freaking chastise us for clapping for Val. Sorry, this is our chambers, not yours. We elected you to work for us. And then also in your bio, Jung, you said you work for the, your constituents. No, you're not. Thank you. Miss Sutton, if you could, Ms. Sutton, if you could give me your documents that you displayed for the record. Um, next up speaking is Ms. Stephanie Dillingham, followed by Ms. Cindy Martinez. Ms. Dillingham? No. Okay. All right. Ms. Stephanie Martin or Cindy Martinez, followed by Ms. Catherine Snedeker. Welcome, Ms. Martinez. Good morning, commissioners, Mr. Manager, Mr. Assistant District Attorney, staff. I'm back for another edition of the same old thing. And uh, may I have the overhead, please? Yes. Can we get the overhead, please? We've gone through the statistics. I don't need to repeat that, but I'm going to go through uh, a listing of where we're at. Directive 041 by the governor set a trap door for the commissioners where they had no choice but to bow to the uh, governor and unelected bureaucrats. The original plan stipulated to vaccination rates, which also included unconstitutional directives on places of worship. Here's our current staff report that I'll go into later because I'm anticipating what our unelected bureaucrats are going to say. Here is our current map roadmap to recovery. And then here's your corker. Here are the people who actually have authority because you have all ceded your authority to unelected bureaucrats. Mr. Lucy, please pay attention. Kevin Dick, I'm sorry, this is the Doug Thornley city manager for city of Reno endorsing while allowing, also allowing time for more Washoe County residents to get fully vaccinated. City of Sparks City Manager Neil Krutz, Nevada Hospital Association, while the NHA is not a governmental entity and is not going to usurp the authority of local elected officials, right, has an emphasis on vaccinating the public. Washoe County Health District endorsement Kevin Dick with no medical background. And then here's your corker. 
another endorsement by Kristen McNeil, the superintendent of the Washoe County School District. It's my hope that the Board of County Commissioners, along with all of the endorsing agencies, can work together to actively promote vaccinations, social, blah, 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 blah all, the, all the pablum that they, they offer. Remember, Kristen McNeil is, is the superintendent that they had to scrape the bottom of the barrel to put in charge of our Washoe County School District. We, the people of Washoe County, did not give the Board of Commissioners permission to cede their authority to unelected bureaucrats. We repudiate their claimed authority over our constitutional rights. The Constitution is the supreme law of the land. You swore an oath to uphold and defend the Constitution, and by turning over the responsibility for our freedom and constitutional rights to unelected bureaucrats, you are violating our civil rights, our constitutional rights. You're breaking the law. Thank you, Ms. Martinez. Next up, Ms. Catherine Snedeker, followed by Ms. Diane Craig. For the record, I'm Katherine Snedeker, a non-person, non-resident, unenfranchised natural woman. You know, you know, you've never had the authority past 30 days to force the public at large to wear a mask. You have never, in all of this time, had constitutional, legal, or lawful authority to do that. That means you've all abandoned your positions as a commissioner and you're just sitting up there as the guy in the park because you're acting under color of law. You're acting under official right. You're forcing the general public to follow the rules of OSHA by the proprietors, of the businesses, just like you're using these people to carry out your mask mandate because you won't come forward and make it stand out there and do it yourself. And just like the pretend governor is passing this on to the counties, he has no more authority to do that than you have to enforce it. Yes. We are the government. You represent us. Tell your handlers that. Because you're acting in a proprietary capacity as a corporation. Please don't forget anything I say here, I can prove with statutes and Supreme Court cases. And I think I might be doing that pretty soon. Because we're sick and tired of you acting like our parents. I went through my whole life without one bit of assistance from the government to protect my health until you people. Yeah. Who do you think you are? There is no vaccine for COVID. That is a big fat lie that's being advertised by our news media, the general news media, and by you and the city council and everybody else. That's a fraud that you are committing on the public. There is no vaccine for COVID. It is an experimental jab. And it's causing very, very serious health risks to people. One guy who went with his wife to get the jab, he didn't get it, she did. Next morning, his nuts were so big he couldn't put his pants on. And he didn't get the jab, he got the vaccine that is not a vaccine. And it's not shedding, it's transmitting. It transmit whatever that person got to the person standing next to him. And for you, thank you, Ms. Nesper. People, they need to get a vaccine. Thank you, Next up, Ms. Diane Craig. Thank you, ma'am. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I have so much to say and I never know where to go with it, but this is where I'm going with it this morning. COVID-19 has been one of the worst things that I've seen happen to our world in my 60 years. The devastating and 
detrimental effects it has had on our society is not merely from the loss of life. Many people have lost businesses they spent their whole lives building. People have been brainwashed that it is not safe to see their parents or grandparents for over a year. Worse yet, if you have a loved one in any kind of a care facility, you can't visit them. How tragically sad is that? Can you imagine if that was you, any one of you up there, and you were not able to see your children or your spouse because you needed to be in a care facility for, let's, not, let's just say Alzheimer's or, or Parkinson's, and you couldn't see your family? Oh my God, it's a sin, an absolute sin. And what about the terminally ill or someone brought to the hospital for an emergency and they are terrified and their loved ones can't be with them? I had a close friend die at the beginning of COVID and it was not from COVID. And he was in that hospital for a week and his wife and his children could not be with him while he died. Come on, this is ridiculous. This is so unfair. So many of, so many of them have been robbed. Let's go to our children now. <laughs> so many of them have been robbed of normal childhood things, going to school with their friends and playing on the playground with not have, and not having the fear of God put in them that they might die or God forbid make grandma and grandpa sick if they don't wear a mask. What a load. What about the older children? What, what, they, what they have lost? Kids who will never know the joy and excitement of going to the prom. How many of you missed your prom? Probably not too many. How fun was it to get dressed up and be excited to go out to dinner and dance? They'll never get it. What about graduation and the pride of receiving that diploma? And for some of them, that's the only one they'll receive. And the celebrating of the graduation parties with their friends and families, it, there will be no redo over for these events. They're lost forever. Then there's the greatest loss of all, and that is our freedom, our freedom to choose. Choose to stay home or to go out. Choose if I wear a mask. Choose if I get a vaccine. This so-called pandemic is dividing us as a nation and a society, forcing people to wear a mask and trying to keep people apart from concerts. Uh, sporting events, weddings, large gatherings, all in the name of keeping us safe? When did it become the government's job to keep us safe? It is our decision. Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Craig. Yeah. Next up on Zoom, we have Nicholas St. John. All right. Mr. St. John. Mr. St. John. Okay. <clears throat> can you hear me? We can hear you now, sir. Okay, let me get my timer started. All right. Okay. Uh, Nicholas St. John, for the record, Paltrow Patriots. Uh, first of all, uh, just so that we can skip ahead, uh, Chairman, we know that you're going to say that you have no power to change the mandate of mass. So let's just get that cleared out of the way. You can state that later for the record. Uh, one, we're demanding a response to our request for a concise definition of what makes a pandemic. Two, uh, I'm asking for a request for a screen share like the overhead to display some documents. Can they do that? Sorry, sir, we can't do that during, during Zoom. Okay, uh, that brings me to the point three. Uh, if you cannot, if I cannot share my screen, then I'm informing you that you are in violation of USC Title 42, Paragraph 2000, Subparagraph A, as 1001 East 9th Street is a building that falls under the public accommodation definition, and I am being discriminated against by not having free and equal access. As the public outcry seems to be falling on deaf ears and that most of the uh, board is not listening to us, I am petitioning God Almighty to bring judgment on those board members who are imposing restrictions on the citizens of Washoe County that they are causing harm to. I want you to wonder if every light, red, light you, red light you stop at or a stop sign, could this be the intersection that someone runs a light or stop sign and T-bones you bringing you God's judgment? When you lay down every night, I want you to wonder if you will still wake up the next morning or will the Lord call you to account 
and that you find yourself in his presence being held to account. Haman in the scripture hanged on the gallows that he constructed for Mordecai. Korah's rebellion saw the leader, uh, the Lord open up the ground and swallow 225,000 that rebelled. Israel was taken into captivity not once, but twice for not being obedient to God. King Nebuchadnezzar crawled on the ground and he grasped for a cow, like a cow, for seven years. Do not think yourself above the judgments of God. He desires that none should perish into eternity without his saving grace. It is indeed a terrible thing to fall into the hands of an angry God. It's time for you to step up and take control of this county. You do not have to uh, kowtow to the governor who has given you unconstitutional uh, edicts and mandates that you do not have to follow. Step up and do your job. All right. Next up on Zoom is Rebecca Marco, followed by Anne-Marie Grant. All right. Ms. Marco. Hi, my name is Rebecca Marco. I wanted to actually thank the commissioners for being such advocates. Um, I am a very high-risk patient, and I spent about a year stuck inside my house and socially distanced from my teenagers and my husband because they do have to go out and i really want to appreciate your guys's advocacy for masks and for the vaccine and i look forward to more people getting it thank you thank you Ms. marco next up Anne marie grant on zoom Ms. grant Anne marie grant for the record sister of thomas purdy murdered by reno police in washoe county sheriff's office during a mental health crisis, 10-4-2015, Hogg tied for over 40 minutes as he begged for his life and medical attention. Today, I'd like to talk about another man that was murdered at the jail. Nico Lamar Smith was 31 years old when he was asphyxiated. 8-29-2015 at Washoe County Jail, the inmate death rate was five times the national average when Nico died a horrible, torturous death at the hands of Deputy Paul Hubble, Sergeant Corey Salferino, Brandon Wood, and Emmanuel Figueroa. Nico was taken into custody at a bail bondsman, clearly in the midst of a mental health crisis. He thought his girlfriend was trying to poison him with peanut butter cups. Clearly, he needed a hospital not to be brought to the county jail. Nico allegedly attempted suicide. Deputies, six to eight deputies surrounded Nico, who was prone face down with two knees kneeling on his neck and back. No deputy attempted CPR once Nico stopped breathing. Nico was a father of one young son, a brother, son, and a friend to many. I have gotten to know Nico's brother, Romeo, to our shared nightmare. He, too, hopes for transparency and accountability and for no other family to know this unnecessary heartache. Please do your jobs. Thank you. Next, Mr. Chairman, I have emails that were submitted by Amory Grant, Bruce and Lisa Durgan, and Cody Heimendinger that will be placed on file. Thank you, Madam Clerk. As we're seeing no further public comment, we'll close public comment and bring it back to the board. Um, we are on to agenda item four. This is commissioners and county managers announcements. Mr. Manager, do you have anything this morning? Uh, I do not, Mr. Chair. Right. Uh, commissioners, do, you, do anybody have anything to add this morning? All right. Seeing none, all right, we will move on to item five. Mr. Manager. Item five is a recommendation and possible action to approve the Washoe County COVID-19 Local Mitigation and Enforcement Plan and direction the staff to submit the plan to the COVID-19 Mitigation and Management Task Force for, for approval as the final local plan for Washoe County as required by the Governor's Declaration of Emergency Directive 41. <clears throat> the plan was developed as required by the directive, which delegated to the counties the duty and authority to develop a COVID-19 local mitigation and enforcement plan to be submitted to the task force for approval prior to uh, the governor delegating management of mitigation measures and transitioning authority to local control. As required by the directive, the county consulted, collaborated with, and has received the endorsement of the plan from the county health officer, Kevin Dick, the Washoe County School District Superintendent, local and regional hospitals, the Nevada Hospital Association, 
and the city managers of Reno and Sparks in creating the plan. The proposed plan addresses the topics required by the directive, including mitigation measures for public uh, gatherings and events, including a process for review and approval of large gathering plans, retail businesses and indoor, indoor malls, community recreation centers, including public pools, food and beverage establishments, such as bars, wineries, distilleries, and breweries, places of worship, gyms, fitness studios, yoga studios, dance studios, martial arts, and similar establishments, spas, massage, hair salons, and barber shops, nail salon, body art, and piercing, and similar establishments, arcades, racetracks, bowling alleys, mini golf, pool halls, theme parks, and similar activities, and youth and adult recreational sports. This plan also includes enforcement measures and procedures for ensuring compliance with mitigation measures, a strategy for ensuring adequate monitoring of COVID-19, and public information campaigns to promote plans, sorry, to promote public health measures and vaccination efforts. Unless the task force returns the plan for further revision, this will be the final local plan. All right, thank you, Mr. Manager. And I see we have Assistant County Manager Dave Solero here with us to provide us an update in regards to where we are as of today with the plan. Mr. Solero. Good morning, Commissioners. For the record, Dave Solero, Assistant County Manager. I uh, just have a very brief presentation to give us the overview of where this plan lands. Uh, this is a fully endorsed plans plan as described uh, within Directive 041 uh, by the Governor of the State of Nevada. Uh, just really briefly, I know you've seen these before, uh, but uh, you know this plan was developed with some guiding principles as well as objectives that we're trying to accomplish. Uh, and so uh, just as a reminder, this is uh, for the period of May 3rd through May 31st. The governor has subsequently uh, submitted Directive 044, which makes a bunch more changes uh, June 1st uh, that this plan will no longer cover. Uh, but we do have these objectives, and this is the reasoning behind where this plan stands today. So uh, the mitigation measures proposed, uh, as we've heard, as we understand, uh, we all know by now that this plan cannot change mask rules within Washoe County or the state of Nevada. Uh, I believe it's uh, important that I bring that forward. Uh, because that is not under the authority of the Board of County Commissioners. Uh, hygiene is still a must throughout our community. We must continue to wash our hands, disinfect surfaces. We all know what's best to do. Uh, outdoor, pro or actually any private gatherings, uh, we're recommending that the, we follow the CDC guidance for private gatherings. Uh, that's, just, uh, that's just smart business these days. So what is changing with this plan? Uh, we, we are going to allow the lifting of capacity limits within our businesses and stores. Um, followed uh, utilizing CDC guidance for social distancing, uh, and that's everywhere, indoors, outdoors, restaurants, bars, locker rooms, gyms, hot tubs, places of worship, retail, sporting events, tournaments, all of those things. Uh, a group is now 10, so whereby today, uh, groups within restaurants, bars, and events is six, uh, we'll be moving that to 10. Um, all sports are a go, self-serve buffets, however, are not. Uh, however, starting June 1st, uh, buffets will be allowed again. Um, in, uh, in Washoe County, uh, all events uh, up to 500 participants uh, are allowed without a plan. However, if you're going to go over 500 participants within Washoe County in the next uh, period of time in May, uh, you will need to submit a large gathering plan. Uh, for indoor and outdoor, uh, again, no seating capacity limits. However, social distancing is going to be the thing that rules the capacity within our venues. Uh, uh, let's see, um, a, a venues can pre-certify for different types of events uh, that are over 500. So for instance, if a, uh, a hotel casino wants to help hold a convention of over 500 people, uh, they only need to certify the convention space, not every individual uh, event that occurs within that space. Um, and then events that are approved by business and industry currently uh, can continue along with that approved plan or they can uh, submit a plan to the local authorities, uh, City of Reno, City of Sparks, Washoe County, or the Health District. Um, but if they don't, then that, 
the uh, capacities and things that they have under the business and industry plan will be enforced during the month of May. Again, bar service allows uh, service at the bar that currently is not available. Um, but if, uh, if the bar owners want to create a designated spot at the bar, they can do that. Uh, again, uh, uh, expand body art and piercing services around the nose and mouth. Uh, and then the adult entertainment establishments will remain closed in Washoe County until June 1st. Um, the plan allows for 100% capacity come June 1st without social distancing. Uh, we do, however, have a mechanism in place in case the spread of COVID uh, gets out of hand again. Uh, those are those two items on the, on the right-hand side. But the intent of this plan is that, and the intent of uh, Directive 44 from the state of Nevada is that come June 1st, Washoe, or the state of Nevada will be uh, open 100%, and that includes Washoe County. So uh, again, just a few things. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out um, is that we are consistent with our surrounding counties with a couple of notable exceptions. Uh, in those surrounding counties, the public gatherings uh, of 250 or more need a plan. Again, Washoe County is suggesting 500. Uh, and then the surrounding counties also kept six people at a table uh, within those, uh, those jurisdictions. So just wanted to make sure that it was understood that we did, did look in other locations and understand what those plans are so that we don't negatively impact those communities and those communities don't negatively impact our community. So with that, I'll turn it back over to the board with any questions that you may have. All right, thank you, Mr. Solero. Um, are there any questions by any of the commissioners? All right, seeing that. All right, uh, Vice Chairman. So, Mr. Solero, um, we're we're saying that I'm just going to use um, six foot distancing. That's a that's a mandate by the state. But yet the CDC says that if you're vaccinated, we can all be outside. That's okay. This plan contemplates utilizing CDC guidance for social distancing. Outdoors? Outdoors, indoors, everywhere. But the CDC is not necessarily saying six feet that I'm aware of outdoors. I checked this morning on the CDC website and the definition of social distancing is to socially distance uh, with groups that are not from your same household. Okay. Indoors and out. Okay. And um, at what point, Mr. Chairman, do we want to put on the record some of the issues with respect to um, matters? Mr. Uh, Vice Chairman, I, I have Number thing I'm going to address. Um, so I was giving you an opportunity to ask any questions in regards to the plan. Okay. Um, but one, one more, one more question. All right. Um, adult entertainment still closed, but you can go to Story County and go to a brothel. Okay. I know that, but adult entertainment is, it, it's, it's according to this. I mean, it's you know, it's like the clubs and etc. That that is correct for the month of May. Uh, the adult entertainment and adult uh, okay. businesses will be uh, remain closed within Washington. Were, were those requests by the health board? That was a, that was a review by everyone involved in the process. Uh, okay. So it was uh, you know that was that was vetted through the entire uh, group that that put through this process uh, to receive those endorsements. Again, I'm just trying to understand some consistencies between one county to the next because it, it just doesn't seem to be there. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right. Thank you. Any questions? Any further questions? All right. Seeing none, uh, thank you, Mr. Solera. I do appreciate uh, the opportunity for you to come and give those questions. Um, I don't think there's any more questions, so to speak, for you, so we appreciate it. Thank you. I will call public comment. Is there public comment, ma'am? There is, Mr. Chairman. Ms. Jamie Shepler, followed by Ms. Cindy Martinez. All right. Ms. Shepler, uh, it doesn't look like Ms. Shepler is still here. It looks like she's left. Okay, Miss Cindy Martinez. Miss Martinez. Okay, I guess I missed the part of your plan. Um, Madam Clerk requested a copy of my documents, and I did not want to get rid of my original documents. And um, I sincerely, sincerely, Mr. District Attorney, if you would look up, please, and give me your attention, sir. Ma'am, ma'am, please address the board. Ms. Martinez. This is, this is a problem across the United States when people come up and address their public servants that they're in it, and don't laugh at me, ma'am. They, 
disrespect the citizens when they come to the microphone and are distracted and looking at phones and notes and coffee and whatever else it is that they're doing. And that, that's what we're experiencing across the United States. Um, and I didn't get to see it. I guess that's Mr. Solero who gave his uh, plan. One of the things I want to point out on the roadmap to recovery, on the current plan, what, what's interesting is that the endorsements that are on here reference vaccination rates. Now, previously when we've been here, there was, you're really, really disrespectful, Mrs. Jung. Um, Ms. Martinez. The, uh, Ms. Martinez. Previously, I'm, Please address the board as a whole, please. I'm, I'm asking you, I've been very patient today. Thank you. Previously, there were requirements of vaccination rates that were hoped to achieve. What I noticed in the current documentation here is that the unelected bureaucrats have made reference in their documentation about vaccination rates. There's also buried in here on the page three of the uh, roadmap the Truckee Meadows COVID risk meter sewer prevalence study data and vaccination rates are two tools to be used in addition to the three metrics tracked at the state level. In addition to that, there's a, a comment on here, social distancing requirements will no longer be in effect on June 1st, 2021. Now this is key, per the desire of the governor of the state of Nevada. What element of science does that fulfill? the desire of the governor. This isn't about masks. This isn't about social distancing. This is about pure tyranny. You guys are the elected representatives of the county, and you have relinquished your responsibility to unelected bureaucrats. And this, this uh, commission has taken the position that you have no power to override the school district, yet the school district is one of the elements of unelected bureaucrats whose permission is being sought before we can do anything. You know, this is an absolute outrage, it's unlawful, and it's unacceptable. And I'm, I'm so disgusted, what I've found in the last year is that all three branches of government are gone. Thank you, Ms. Martinez. Next up, we have Nicholas St. John on Zoom. All right. Mr. St. John. Uh, good morning still. Um, for the record, Nicholas St. John. <clears throat> One of the things that we heard uh, previously, uh, first a couple things. One, there was a special session canceled, uh, which I still do not understand why they canceled that session, considering that the, the stuff we're going through now was discussed and should have been discussed and voted on back then, and then now we're the third day into May, and that was not uh, not done before, so now we're doing it now. Next, one of the things that has been brought up before is that one of the things that there's restrictions to is places of worship. According to the First Amendment, Congress and nor any elected uh, body can give any endorsement or restrictions to any of the freedom of exercise of our religion. So while that's on there, it should be stricken. Next, one of the things we had heard discussed before was about having uh, changes from cases to hospitalizations. And uh, we would like that to be put back in. Uh, this is not about cases. Cases can be easily manipulated as many have talked about before. And hospitalizations are were, prior to COVID-19, the standard for telling exactly what was going on with a communicable disease. According to the uh, statistics, there have been 669 deaths from or with COVID in this county. And while each and every one of those deaths is tragic, well, we have already submitted five things that you uh, to you of ways that can be treatments, protocol treatments, yet we have heard nothing about you working with the health district to get those implemented so there are no more deaths. Next, according to the CDC, only 6% of those who have died uh, from something COVID related are actually direct deaths from COVID with no comorbidities. Of 669, that puts it at around 40 or 41 people. 
according to statistics from um, decades ago, measles is more contagious than COVID and the death rate is actually higher than what we have with the 6% that comes from the CDC of actual deaths. So we would like to put back, have you guys put back in that you're gonna count hospitalizations and not case counts because that gives the governor a loophole in which case he can then at any time come back in and put his heavy handed overreaching government tyranny and dictator, dic dictatorship back onto the people of this county. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. St. John. I have nobody else signed in. All right, seeing no further on public comment, I'll bring it back to the board. Uh, um, Mr. Slero, uh, Vice Chairman Hartung has another question for you in regards to the plan. Thank you, Mr. Slero. So um, I, I don't I don't know if it's if it's listed. So we were talking about adult entertainment. Does that include nightclubs like the nightclubs that uh, exist at at most of uh, the casinos? For the record, Dave Solero, Assistant County Manager, that is correct. Uh, adult, adult entertainment establishments, nightclubs, and day clubs are contained in that, in that okay. grouping. All right. All right. But, okay. They, All right. But for your clarification, uh, Commissioner, those are under the restrictions of SB4, so those properties will be are, uh, okay. validated and checked through uh, the Nevada Gaming Control Board. So, the gaming control board? Yeah, okay. gaming control board oversees all of those, whether the, anything within the establishment. Okay. All right. Seeing any, any other further questions for staff? Seeing none. All right. Thank you, Mr. Slaro. I do have a couple questions, and I want to address a public comment this morning that was a, that was brought forward. Um, it's you know obviously this is not uh, a place any of us want to sit every day and try to discuss this ongoing challenge that everybody has experienced. No one's disagreeing with you that big business has probably got a upper hand during this entire over small business and small business has suffered tremendously. I've sat here before and told you I do not like wearing this mask. I no longer want to wear this mask. I've also said that I don't feel that the current numbers, which are 30, 30 individuals in a hospital, exactly declare a pandemic or a medical emergency. I've said it here, said it again, I'll say it again today. Unfortunately, though, there is some discrepancies with what has been said, and it's too unfortunately the individuals that wish to come and speak during public comment didn't remain for this um, these kind of clarifications. The Health District is its own independent organization that was crafted through NRS many, many years ago, and many of you sound like as if you're very much rule followers and have been and chosen and elected to do so, but feel that the rules are not no, no longer truly working in your uh, to your benefit or to the right of this community or, to, or, or your right as a whole. This, however, the health district was built by NRS. It is in law, unfortunately, and we are mandated by an individual board. This board right here, the county commission, the five of us have no authority. I will, remit, I will say that one more time. No authority over Kevin Dick, the health district officer, or the actions of the, that district as a whole. Secondly, Washoe County School District, has been pointed out, the children have been suffering. I have a seven-year-old son who is in first grade and has had to go to school with a mask on every day, and he does not like it. I don't like sending him to school in it, but we adhere to what has been told. The school district is run by a board of trustees, which we, the people, everybody, has an opportunity to elect the board of trustees, which govern that board. They have meetings Tuesday nights. Many people have attended in this, in this but, so, but we don't have any authority over that school district. Now, many of you pointed out through the directive, Directive 41, that was issued by the, the governor of the state of Nevada, that many of us had to put together a plan that had basically needed the approval of many individuals within our community, both entities, the school district, the health board, and the Nevada Hospital Association. Those endorsements were sought and needed to move forward with any local authority plan. That plan was issued to us two weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago, or a week and a half ago, we submitted that plan and this board, without the endorsements of the City of Reno, the Washoe County Health District, and the Washoe County School District, 
We submitted a plan to the state. The, play, the state did tell us that our plan was okay. It's on live, it's, on, it's a live meeting. You can go back and look at the minutes if you're not familiar with that meeting. The state did iterate that our plan was fine. There was nothing wrong with our plan. However, it did not have the, the proper endorsements, so it would not get the approval. Hence, the reason why we are here today. We had to go seek the endorsements of every individual sought in that 40 and Directive 41 to move forward with a local authority. Now, what you choose to do in your private lives and your personal lives is your own decision. This body and this government has a responsibility to all half million residents in this, in this county. And I appreciate there are many, many opinions about what we are doing. However, there are a lot of opinions for individuals out there that we are doing things in a different fashion. We get all sides of this, and it's very difficult. Now, I assume that you have challenges with what we're doing, but the best we can do for you today is move forward with an endorsed plan that brings local authority back to Washoe County in some form or fashion. It is for 29 days. 29 days until June 1st when that, that plan no longer is in effect and it is 100% without social distancing. Whether the data supports that or not, that's not my decision. I've already said it here on the record that I don't believe that the data supports the decision or what we're going, but I am not the only one here. There are five votes on this commission and many other people within this community that are elected that have not said that they feel the same as I do. Now, we can move forward as a, as a community or we can sit here and continue to be divisive. And I don't think that anybody in this community wants to continue to be divisive. I think what we want to do is try to strive to move forward for the ben benefit of our children, for the benefit of our families, and benefit of our friends and those loved ones around us. We've sat here every day during the pandemic as long as we can, and this chamber has been open to the people. Yes, you've had to wear masks. Yes, you've had to social distance. But this chamber has been your chamber to come speak your mind. The city of Reno has not had open meetings. The city of Sparks has not had open meetings. The Washoe County School District has not had open meetings. This board has. So, with that being said, those are my comments about this plan. And I am very passionate about it because I have been working on this for 15 months. While everybody else was home, I was here at this office working for 15 months, trying to figure out a way forward for, for this community. And it has not been easy. But I did it because I am dedicated as a public servant, not only to my district, but to this county as a whole. So, if there are any other further comments in regards to how we're ineffectively working for you, we're happy to have those and hear those. But I would disagree wholeheartedly that this board has sat here and been at present every step of the way. So with that, you have a plan in front of you. I'm gonna ask my commissioners, I'm not taking any more discussion on this item. We are going to move forward. I'm looking for a motion to approve the plan that is submitted in front of us. Do I have a motion? Anyone? Mr. Chairman, so moved with um, just, I'd, I'd like to have just a, a bit of discussion if the motion gets a second. All right, I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second them. I'll second them. Mr. Okay. Mr. Vice Chairman. So one of the things that, and, and, and I don't disagree with anything you said, one of the things we tried to do was submit Clark County's plan almost verbatim and that was turned down by the health district, the, the city of Reno, and the school district. So we had no other choice but to get them to, uh, uh, to get these three, which everybody has had in their hands, to be on board with this plan. There's no, sadly, uh, there's no other way to move forward I have seconded the, mo or made the motion um, somewhat under, under duress because I feel like the first plan that we submitted was a good plan and the state even stated that it was a good plan. So I completely agree with you. 
I, I know every one of us is frustrated that we're here time and time again. No one from the health district has voted on this. The health board didn't vote. The city of Reno didn't vote. The city of Sparks didn't vote. Nor did the Washington County School District vote. None of those agencies have voted All right. with elected officials. So I just I wanted to put that on the record, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we have a motion in the second. Uh, we've taken public comment on this issue. I'll call for the vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Aye. Motion carries with a four in uh, support, one in opposition. All right. We are on to item six. Mr. Manager, this is our final public comment. Item six is public comment. Comment heard under this item will be limited to three minutes per person and may pertain to matters both on and off the commission agenda. The commission will also hear public comment during individual action items with comment limited to three minutes per person. Comments are to be made to the commission as a whole. All right, Madam Clerk. First up, I have Ms. Jamie Shepler, if she's in chambers. I do not see her in chambers. Um, Mr. Donald Fossum. Mr. Fossum. Mr. Lucy, thank you for showing some passion. And I totally agree with you that more of our people should have stayed you got her flag waves from me, all right? And I'm happy to say that I'm being accepted enough among my people, even though this is a new civics lessons for me compared to where we used to be at. And I spoke of how much more everybody in this country is becoming informed for the next election. But what I was getting to is they allow me to have a voice at their other meetings. And I'm going to tell them that you had passion and compassion for a lot of what we had to say. Uh, but I just got to say this about the direction of our schools. Uh, what's going on in our schools seems to me to be more divisive, more anti-American, uh, and I spoke for the learning of our general public. Well, our conservative wave, our patriarch, patriotic wave, I feel, is being chased by the bad curriculum or the curriculum in the schools which we do not agree with in the regard of the three things I already mentioned. Divisive, anti-American, and I'll leave it at that. So thank you for your time, and it's nice that I'll be able to work with you. Thank Mr. you, sir. Prime, Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next up on Zoom, we have Nicholas St. John. All right, Mr. St. John. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, we can, sir. The floor is yours. Okay. Uh, well, I do want to thank you for the time and energy you've been putting into this. We are not saying that you're not working um, to try to resolve this. We are, though, very unpleased with the progress or the lack thereof of the progress that has been made. I would like to understand uh, more about the health district. You guys keep referencing that. And uh, my research has shown that uh, Chairman Bob Lucy also sits on the board for the uh, for the health district as the vice chair. And so for saying that you have no input in that, I'm not sure is uh, uh, all that genuine because you do have an influence in that district. I also believe that uh, Kevin Dick is uh, what's considered on staff and that the members of that board have control of that. So if you wanted to get rid of him, you could unless I'm mistaken about the way that works, which I could be. But we do want to see some more positive things done. We want to see um, more of the, the board of commissioners standing up for um, uh, not just our rights, but for uh, taking a hardline stand on anything that violates our constitutional rights. And that is what we are very, very, very disappointed in that we are not seeing. Now you can hide behind the idea that the governor has the final say in this. 
but the governor does not have the final say in this as um, uh, one of our fellow patriots, Cindy Martinez has brought up that it, our ultimate document is the Constitution of the United States. It's already been ruled that a pandemic does not have the authority to strip the citizens of this country from their constitutional rights. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Mr. St. John. Next up on Zoom is Anne-Marie Grant. Ms. Grant. Ms. Grant. Anne-Marie Grant. Sister of Thomas Purdy, murdered by Reno Police in Washoe County Sheriff's Office. I agree with Ms. Martinez in attention and no attempt to. We've got people falling asleep, rolling their eyes, and flat out denying culpability. I recently had a welcomed conversation with one of your commissioners and addressed my disgust with you all laughing at a community member who was clearly mentally ill when I attended in person a couple years back. Some of your demeanors are rude, inappropriate, unprofessional, and flat out disgusting. Is it too much to ask for your attention for an hour? I mean, some of your meetings are shorter than the length of time my brother was hogtied and tortured for. Sheriff Balaam, and let's be honest, pretty much every law enforcement and men across the country stated regarding the George Floyd trial of Derek Chauvin, it's past time we hold law enforcement officers who, who, who tarnish our profession and oath accountable for deplorable actions, just not the ones in his own department. The men who killed my brother, Nico Smith and Justin Thompson, are no different than George Floyd's murderers. You say you have no control of the sheriff's office, but you make their budget. You literally have the ability to reappropriate funds elsewhere, but you don't. You just want to deny any culpability or control over them. Have a nice day. Thank you, Ms. Grant. I have nobody else signed in. All right, seeing no further public, uh, public comment, we'll bring it back to the board. We're on item seven, Mr. Manager. This is our final commissioners and county managers announcements. Mr. Manager, do you have anything? I have nothing, Mr. All Chair. Right. Commissioners, seeing, do you have something? Commissioner Herman. In regards to what we've been talking about today, last month, uh, the s members of the same group that have showed up for every meeting provided us with a resolution. It was well written, and it it could work, and but it wasn't even considered. So I just. I wanted to say that I'm still of the same mind as I was on the first meeting we had, so I'm sorry that we weren't able to come in there halfway or something, but uh, we haven't, but that's all I have to say. Thank you, Commissioner Herman. Anything further from anybody else? Saying none, we are adjourned. Thank you very much.